Snooker 19 lets you choose from 128 of the world's best players. The first game mode is Quick Match, which gives you the opportunity to play a traditional match. Six Red, which is a variant of the sport that uses six red balls instead of the usual 15, or Shootout, another variant of the sport. And you can play these against either the AI or against a friend. You can select whether to play just one frame or as many as 35 frames, and a number of real life venues are also included, such as the Crucible and Alexandra Palace. The main content of the package comes in the form of the career mode, which in itself is split into two parts. You can choose the Pro Seasons or the Rising Star Routes. Pro Seasons sees you take on the role of one of the established professionals of the game, attempting to qualify for and subsequently win the 25 represented tournaments. Each win will see you add the respective trophy to your trophy room, and I must admit, I do love it when sports games show you the trophies that you've won. You have some limited customization options for your pro in terms of the outfit they wear and the queue they use, and you can track the prize money you earn whilst watching your pro climb the all-time Hall of Fame as you go. Rising Stars sees you start as a young and upcoming player, beginning bottom of the rankings. This mode seems harder as you generally play higher ranked opponents in the qualifiers. There is not a huge amount to either career mode, other than going from one tournament to the next. I was half expecting some interaction with other professionals, perhaps here. a rivalry building up, or even stats and attributes that build as you progress, but it's essentially just a run through the season, one tournament after another. There isn't really enough to differentiate one professional from another either, which does water down the initially impressive looking 128 included players, and this is quite a disappointment. You can only have one career mode running at a time too and starting a new one will reset any trophies that you've won. Another feature of the game is that of an online tournament mode. Now this actually syncs up to the dates of real life tournaments throughout the year, with the next one as of the date of this video being the Paul Hunter Classic. There is a separate online trophy room to complement those that can be earned in the career mode. I couldn't test this due to the date of the next one being after this review released, but I really do like the idea of this, with the concept of waiting for each tournament being quite unique, although there is a counter argument I would imagine that it stunts the flow for people who just want to play online tournaments as and when. There is a more traditional online mode to go alongside the tournament mode, which gives you the option to invite or be invited by a friend for a game or to search for an opponent in an unranked online match. Again, I could not test this pre-launch as I could not find an opponent, but I did look into how this works on the other consoles, where Snooker 19 has been out for a while, as I mentioned earlier, and it appears that online matches oh, are time-based. The time this. limit seems to be fixed to 20 minutes per match, although I did hear that this was being patched to a maximum sure of 40 there, minutes. I don't know whether sure. this has been done yet or not. Ten. Now please do take this for exactly what it is, and that's news on how the game works on other consoles. I don't know whether the same model is going to be used on the Switch, but just wanted to try and give you some sort of insight into how it might work. Your online records of wins and defeats is displayed in both quick match and tournament modes. The controls are actually quite nuanced and allow you to be pretty accurate in exactly what you want to do. You use the left stick to move the cue into the desired position and the cue moves at quite a steady pace so you don't find yourself constantly spinning around trying to get it into position. A white line will show you the path of the cue ball and at this point the camera will move to behind the cue ball and you can refine the direction of your shot by making some finer adjustments and you do this by holding down the ZL button and moving the stick to make those necessary adjustments. You then take the shot by pulling back on the right stick and then pushing it up forward when your line is within the target area. Failure to stop the bar whilst it's in this area will see your shot direction affected. Moving on a step further from this, you can put some spin on the cue ball too, allowing you to position it where you want it to be in preparation for your next shot. To do this, you hold down the ZR button to enter spin control mode and then position the aiming aid using the right stick. You will be able to see the direction that the ball you are hitting will go as well as the area that the cue ball will end up by way of these aiming aids. There are a few different aiming aid options available, but they all felt very similar to be honest, and you can of course play without them instead, should you wish. True to its real life counterpart, Snooker 19 is a slow paced game, even down to your AI opponents having thinking time between shots. You can speed up your opponent's moves by holding down the ZR button when it's their turn, should you wish, but this does not apply to the thinking time. The game's loading times can also be a little bit long at times too. 
The computer AI is actually pretty ruthless and does not suffer falls lightly. Playing lower ranked opponents will sometimes see the missed shots you would expect them to pot, but for the most part, if you find yourself off the table after missing a shot, you could well be sitting there for a while. It's a steep learning curve, especially if you are not particularly good at snooker in real life, and I would most certainly put myself into this category, and you will need to learn when to apply spin in order to set yourself up for subsequent shots. There is a very brief tutorial included, and perhaps a little more could have been done with this to show you the techniques in practice during a real game scenario, just to show newcomers to the sport how to use techniques such as spin to their advantage, not just the application, but the methodology behind it. This is perhaps the game's biggest misstep. It's a very good simulation of its sport with realism at a high, but unfortunately this sets the accessibility bar a bit too high for anyone that isn't a die-hard follower. With all that said, once you begin to get into it and feel a bit more confident with potting, Snooker 19 is fun. The ball physics seem very true to life with each shot having a weighty feel to it and the amount of power you put into your shots does make a noticeable difference to proceedings as it should do. Gameplay in Snooker 19 receives 15 out of 20. Controls are simple to learn and difficult to master and they receive 16 out of 20. Snooker 19 uses its official license well with accurate and pretty solid character models of the 128 players included as well as the 26 real life venues depicted in the game. Character animations for the most part are sound, with shots being taken from a realistic stance and players moving around the table in a lifelike manner. During the AI's thinking time, their player will sometimes just stand there fairly lifeless, which does break the immersion a tad, damaging the realistic tone that the game tries so hard to maintain. But this is a minor grievance on the grand scheme of things. The graphics do have a slight blur to them in handheld mode, but it is only slight and doesn't affect the gameplay. There is also a colorblind mode available, which shows you the values of the color balls to make identification easier, and this is accessed by pressing Y. Audio-wise, Snooker 19 features a commentary duo of Neil Foles and David Hendon, and in some respects, the commentary suffers a little in a similar way to how older FIFA games did. You will hear some phrases too often, and sometimes the phrase used will just not fit the context of what has just happened. And woe betide anyone that takes their time over a shot, as the commentary team will use the same two or three comments or quips to try and get you to hurry up. Well, he used to be indecisive, but now he's not so sure. Well, sometimes playing this slowly can upset your flow. Maybe he just needs to get on with it and get his rhythm back. It comes across as a few uninteresting one-liners rather than two knowledgeable people conversing. There are also occasions such as seeing the crowd clapping in the background but not hearing it. Just, again, little immersion breakers which are unfortunate. The menu music is inoffensive and serves its purpose well, but should this become a more regular franchise, audio is definitely an area that could do with some improvement, as it feels a little bit awkward at the moment. As much as I am quite nonplussed when it comes to HD Rumble, I do feel that this is one game that could have benefited from it. Feeling some subtle feedback whenever you hit the cue ball, with the strength of this feedback reflecting the power you put into the shot, could have added some extra immersion. Visuals receive 15 out of 20, whilst audio scores 12 out of 20. Snooker 19 costs £29.99, €34.99 or $34.99. And to be fair, this is cheaper than some of the other licensed sports games available on the Switch. For this price, you are getting a realistic simulation of the sport that is perhaps a little light in game modes. There's quick play of course, and I don't know if it's just me expecting more by the name career mode, but I was disappointed that it is just a run through the seasons, I just thought there'd be a little bit more character building available. There are the online modes too, as well as the local multiplayer of course, and value scores 15 out of 20. To conclude, Snooker 19 achieves what it sets out to do by delivering a solid and realistic representation of a sport that has not had as much of the limelight as others over the years. But it does achieve this by seemingly aiming itself at hardcore fans of the sport, which could limit its appeal. Too few differences between pros, a basic career mode and uninspiring commentary also hold this game back from being essential. If you are a huge snooker fan waiting for a realistic simulation of your sport, your wait is over. If you are not a fan of the sport, but just enjoy sports games, be aware that a lack of tutorials and a steep learning curve will make this a difficult one to access, 
but there is still fun to be had if you persevere. If you were hoping for a snooker game that would talk you through how to play and ease you into proceedings, you might want to think twice. I do however have a feeling that should there be a snooker 20, they could be onto something special if they tweak a few of these issues.